To design is to simulate. How can we simulate now and also do what we believe to be good design? So we selected an incredible group of folks who are doing that using the latest tools of arguably design, which is virtual reality, augmented reality, and different kinds of realities, many realities. Starting right now, um, the, the first question really is, how do you think VR can be used to make uh, the real, um, that is the, the world without goggles on, better? And I'm going to add some points to that. Can it? <laughs> and then the second one, should it? Should VR be responsible for making the world better once you take the goggles off? Does anybody want to tackle that? Or do you just, yeah? No? You're out? Pass. Okay, fine. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thanks, man. Thanks for the vote of support. Seriously. Anyone? Bueller? It can. Good move. Um, I mean, I think that we should, we, the problem with VR is that because it's a screen and it has pixels, we're like, oh, it's a movie. Or because we can use similar things to, we have, you know, controllers and, you know, we're, uh, we oftentimes think of it as a video game. But in reality, it's like a little bit, it's a little sprinkling of immersive theater, video games, film, and also interactive installations. So these are all tools that we've been using in the past to be able to change people's perception, to be able to inspire them to think differently. So now we just have to, understand that this is a new canvas and with a new canvas comes you know new potential um, I don't think it's going to be reinventing anything I should think it's going to be just enhancing you know practices that we already have it is more engaging because it's not like a 16 by 9 frame you know that you can you can turn your head away uh, or you can be doing something else at the same time when you're in VR it's sort of all consuming it's it's immersive it's, you know there's so many buzzwords that get thrown around and I wish that we were able to sort of create a new lexicon to be able to describe these things, because people also talk about, you know, VR bingo as soon as someone says, like, you know, sixed off, immersive, or like r r uh, riff rash, you know, take a shot, or something like that. But um, there we go. Um, but I think that, that you know, it's all, up, it's, it's really about the, the people who are creating it. Um, you know, these could be for, for, you know, for brands. We could be making things that are selling products. We could be making, you know, more immersive or more compelling things to sell products. Or we could be making more immersive and compelling things to be able to shift people's perspective from a first-person point of view. Um, and I think that that's where the, the, the power is. And it's also so unknown because it's so early. But we're seeing that, you know, in six minutes, we can make someone cry. We can make someone, you know, very upset. We can make someone's heart raise in a way that other forms of storytelling haven't really, I guess, been as potent. So it's, it's very exciting, um, but it's so new, so it's, it's hard. I think that's why everyone is sort of maybe not wanting to go out and, and answer it right away. Um, I also want to include in that AR, by the way, because I know some of you guys are doing augmented reality as well. Do you guys feel like, I mean, I don't know if anybody else wants to respond to it. I, I'm just curious, so are you, in your question, are you asking if VR should be better than real life? Is that part of your question? No, it's not exactly what I'm asking. I'm sort of asking, is just re, does VR or, you know, this type of, um, right, or an alternate realities or the construction of worlds, really, which is what virtual reality and AR does, does it have a certain responsibility for good um, inherent in it? And I'm wondering if you guys feel that that's the case, uh, and assuming that it can do any good. Because I know with Peters, for example, it really challenges the question of whether or not it simultaneously supports that and negates it, right? Like Peter says, um, this is making us crazy. And it really is. And I mean that in the most intense level of uh, immer you know, immersion, but you're also using immersive media to make that point. So I'm just wondering, you know, is there a responsibility within this uh, for somehow finding a, a larger impact once you take it off? Yes. Oh God, really? This, uh, this is my crew, I love them. Thank you so much, that's great. Okay, cool. I, I mean, um, whew. Um, no, I mean, it is, a, it is a medium or something that's gonna transform every aspect of our life, you know? Uh, and I do believe that. And I think, given that, I think we have to think very early on of how we can use it for something creative and different. And I think what's been incredibly encouraging, maybe it's the sign of the times, is that compared to maybe other like radical revolutionary mediums or transformations, you haven't had like empathy and impact and all these amazing things happen very early on that have been supported and are coming out. And I think 
that's what's really i think people are doing that because they realize we better get ahead of this to do something so it can impact you for me it was a very hard thing to do clouds of residua and uh justify that to the un because they just said who's going to see it this just seems like something that no one's going to be able to watch and a lot of people relatively can't watch it but my feeling was that when i first discovered the internet um and then my sort of engagement with those chat rooms about open source and some of those values i think people for me what was cool is that if someone was going to watch some first content rather than it be a roller coaster if it's like about a refugee crisis that could maybe imprint them in a different way and that's kind of i think what a lot of like the the a lot of the content here does very early on that if it's your first experience with a new technology i just th- i have a feeling it just could change how you would do it or how you would think about what it should be used for you know i would also look at it and kind of flip the question in a way so vr ar our technologies they're tools and so when tools emerge they have all kinds of capabilities so we see the emergence of you know some people study text as a technology you know you see the emergence of of actual hand tools or um, you see the emergence of weaponry as a tool and all of these all of these technologies and tools have inherent capabilities the onus is on us to do good the onus is not on the tool to do good the onus is on us so we have to employ the tool in the right way and i think if we have our compass aligned and we feel that moral responsibility then it's incumbent upon us to act and put the tool to good use i i, I like to kind of look at this thing this question like for, if possible from a hindsight kind of perspective and look at other mediums as they evolve and if you can look back at them and ask the same question like hey uh 50 years earlier like uh, maybe 100 years earlier when radio was evolving becoming a, like a widespread uh, technology the coolest technology over there where you like you like could be a uh, hundreds of miles apart but you can hear the person like you can hear the voice you can hear and that could have been a, like a really powerful tool for building empathy at that point of time like hearing uh, people's like tales from like the world war would have been so powerful and uh, so uh, now if you look back at it and we can say hey as as a new medium of technology uh did you have any responsibility for general social good i think our answer will be yes if we, our answer will be yes for television and similarly if we go in future 50 years and we look back at this time and say hey this evolving technology and this medium uh, does it have any responsibility towards a society and towards general public good i feel the answer is definitely yes and i completely agree like uh, we are the ones who define the answer you are the ones who will act on those answers and uh, if we collectively decide to do that the answer is definitely yes nice well thanks for answering that i know everybody was like no i'm not going to talk to you But I think this is a really this next one is um for everybody again. Are you designers? Is what you do design? I'll I'll try to ask it one more the way. Do you think what you're doing is designing experiences and is designing experiences uh being in part a designer? Yes, I think the answer is yes. I think there's um <laughs> Okay, drop the mic. That's it. Yeah. I think that there's uh my experience of one of the things that's so exciting to me about working with new technology is that there's always a certain there's always design incumbent upon anyone who's creating with that new technology in part because you're creating the lexicon for that technology and design and creative problem solving share so much with creating that kind of um rule book playbook um best practices all of that sort of action a lot of that is really supported by the historical notion of how design thinking evolves and how that kind of questioning question and answer iteration exploration experimentation and hopefully ultimately solution finding occurs at least as you develop solutions over time and we see the solutions stack up on each other which creates logic chains that ultimately create the sort of aesthetics and um and approaches that we apply to create the creation process itself. So Militsa and I are actually designers in residence at a space called Adio in Brooklyn and I think you know we are like are we designers and we're like well, yeah I think we are designers we it's not on our you know necessarily on our resume or if you type us in LinkedIn you know but for us 
Yeah, I mean, it's, it's all about the user experience. Um, and the, with that, though, there's so many layers that you have to consider when creating a VR piece. It's, you know, it's designed through time. It's design of the space. It's the, you know, the overall look. Is it going to be photorealistic? Are you going to be stylizing it? Um, it's also, you know, how are you going to be, uh, you know, creating a general idea of the project before people see it? So there's so many different elements that come in. And also, you know, with a lot of people, it's going to be their first time viewing VR. So you have to think about, you know, onboarding them. You don't want to confuse them too much. So a lot of it's about using, you know, understanding sort of innate human interactions and being able to employ that into the experience. You don't want to um, confuse people right off the bat. And right now, you sort of have to simplify it. And, you know, just like Gabo was saying, you know, he, he didn't know if he could move the camera in the beginning, you know, because those, those rules were sort of established. Early on, we're told about the rules. Don't move the camera, no cuts, um, and, you know, and keep it simple, but then as the rules are being created, they're also being broken. And I think as designers, it's up to us to figure out how they can be broken, how they can be, you know, how we can be using our, how we normally perceive our everyday life and bring that into the experience um, and use the new tools so that it feels seamless. Uh, the more that we can make an experience feel like everyday life or feel like something that's incredibly surreal, I mean, these are the things that we have to consider, that VR can kind of be anything, and that when we design, we have to create a box and then think about how we're going to break outside of that box. Very well said. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it's a visual medium, so yeah, there's absolutely design involved with it. I think what's interesting is that with VR, you're thinking about design, not just, I come from film, so in film, it's a flat screen. You have a production designer, you have a cinematographer, a director, costume designer uh in vr you have to think about okay if you're a character if you're in the experience how close is the other character going to be toward you to you you know and thinking about design in that way um lighting design is like hugely effective you know space like do you want to feel constricted do you want are you in an open space and it, and it affects you in a very different way than just seeing a you know a photograph or seeing it on screen like you're actually there so you're kind of it's almost like an architect in, in a huge way uh, and the third question is, uh, what's next? And when I say what's next, yeah, just decide the future. So what's, no problem. And uh, what's next? And I mean that in two different ways. Um, what's next f for the medium? And what's next for you? Um, it, you know, uh, it can be what's next, just next, or what's next, next. But what's next? I can speak a little bit about AR. Uh, okay. uh, what's next is craziness. Uh, because uh, what's happening in the in a, in a very short span of time, uh, this this technology has grown rapidly, and it's as I see it's exponentially growing. Uh, in the next few months and not years, uh, this is going to continue that curve of growth. And uh, so the reason I say crazy is because uh, as the technology evolves, like you know, uh, companies like Google would try to kind of provide and offer these new technologies to people. And, and everyone is going to be doing that. My worry is that uh, users' behavior and expectations don't change the, so fast. They, they kind of take their own time to kind of evolve over time. And they, I, my, my hunch and worry is that the pace at which users' behavior and expectation is going to evolve and at the pace at which the technology is growing is, is a mismatch. Uh, even in VR today, like, you know, I don't know, there will be like a million, two million, three million, four million users across the world. Uh, and uh, with AR, like, you know, with some of the recent announcements by some of these large companies, like you'll be having like 500 million phones that are AR ready. Uh, and now, like, there's going to be a mad rush uh, where you'll see developers building random apps, random use cases. And as a problem solver, it hurts me. I think everyone's waiting for the killer app, and I hate using that you know expression. I used to work in the agency side of things, and everyone's like, what's the killer app for this? And everything's got a killer app. Uh, but I think that the killer app, and I think I get paid every time I say that, so. Um, is going to be, it, you know, there's going to be like a Mario. There's going to be uh, something that, that everyone can be like, that was incredible, we all want to play that. But VR is really exciting. You know, when, when Dial-Up first came out, when you had Prodigy, uh, CompuServe, AOL, you know, all these people were, were competing, but it was really about who was on the other side, even though it was just text, and it could have been some 
you know, totally random person on the other side. You had no idea, but it was so exciting, the fact that there was somebody else there. And uh, people love to be interacting with people, especially in a new way. And that's what, you know, VR, AR, all these R's can afford is, is the ability for us to become somebody else, somebody um, totally different, maybe not even a person. So I think things are going to get really interesting when, obviously, when the technology becomes lighter, more comfortable, more affordable, um, faster, uh, more ubiquitous, obviously. These are the things that are going to happen. It's, it's not a question about that. But it's what is the experience that's going to be able to bring everyone in this room together? And what is the, the big thing that companies are trying to find out right now is what's going to make you want to experience it more than once? Because it's great to be able to go, just like if you travel on vacation, you're like, you know, you take your postcard, you're like, I've been there, I've been there, but are you going to go back there? Maybe not. So how can we get people to, to go back in, experience something new every time, and be able to have somebody on the other side uh, you know, be able to meet people. And the other crazy thing which is, is coming is how can we create VR inside of VR? So we're not just thinking about these iteration cycles of making something, putting it on paper, you know, doing stuff in the game engine that way, you know, all this production that could take months and then put on the headset and you're like, that really wasn't what I expected. But how can we be, you know, wh where is the sandbox going to be in VR where we can create something together? Where, you know, there's infinite tools that we can be able to be able to you know bring the, the bring these experiences that that we that are going to be profound that are going to be taking things from our lives that we have now but affordances that that this new technology can bring and you know I don't think any of us have the exact answer to what that will be but that's also what makes it exciting and you know for everyone in this room in terms of what's next at uh, within we definitely really think about the language of storytelling and how that's going to continue to evolve in this space, both from VR and AR. I think it's interesting what you're saying with AR. Yes, in the fall, there's going to be you know hundreds of millions of potential AR users, but how many are actually going to use AR? And also, um, what are compelling experiences in that medium? You know, how do you tell a story if you can put a story right in your world? We're playing with that in VR, and we're playing with that. In AR, so I think it's going to be super, you know, interesting to see how creators, you know, once when they get their tool, when they get their hands on this technology, what they create, and uh, where a lot of these innovations and and discoveries are going to come from. Is it going to come from us, or is it going to, you know, come from? Um, it's just it's going to come from many different places, I think, and and especially from like the younger generation who are really growing up with these technologies that are very native to them. So. Yeah, for us, it's really about like pushing what the, the language of the story is going to be and also the accessibility to the ex experiences as well. I'm very interested in figuring out when it comes to storytelling and authorship and writing and thinking about what authoring an experience even means, how you unwind and unbind the threads that hold stories together because so much of our architecture of stories is based on linearity. And what's so exciting about VR and AR at its best is it's the antithesis to linearity. Um, that it can deliver on some a lot of the same, if not all of the same promises as linear, linear storytelling, but that it gives your audience that freedom and that wonder to sort of to move through it at their own pace, in their own way, and to miss things. And that's the key thing, is they have to miss things to find things. And it reminds me a lot, I thought your slide about VR brings the world, uh, brings you to the world and AR brings the world to you. It was really prescient. And I think like I've often thought in a similar analogy, but not the same words, which was, I've always felt like VR kind of felt like a black box theater you know, you populate the black box. But AR kind of feels like when you're given an experience and you like receive a note that you go to like 42nd Street or you go down to the Hollywood Walk and it's like someone in, in this group of people is a performer. Who is it? And the next thing you know, you're fascinated by what every single person, hundreds of people in that intersection are doing. And that to me on some level is the prom the promise of AR, that there's this capacity to tune you in and to bring people together around these experiences that live in our world. 
And hopefully sort of we can learn more about how we build those experiences and how we unwind those threads to create experiences that live up to that promise. For me, uh, it's been really hard because um, it, I am, I've done my first room scale experience and having to do a lot of 360 and then think about designing or working on that was a whole new challenge of just fades and things. And I mean, it's just, it's become, I, I think as a creator, it's very exciting, but it, VR, everything is just changing and there's so much like evolution that I feel like I got something kind of down and then it just totally flips and I got to keep going into this new thing. So it's very, um, it's very nerve wracking. Um, so I do think VR is moving because I'm, ex you know, with Life of Us and, um, experiential things and haptics and your voice and getting people to participate and social. Um, it's, I think that is happening at a level of like, I'm just finding having to think about and collaborate with people in a whole new way. So I think that's gonna keep happening. But at the same time, I try not to pay attention to the market of VR because I, I it's, kind of depressing um, because, you know, it, the the uptake with what it should, you know, where we would want to be is not necessarily there. And I'm a little worried that we habituated people to 360 so much and then all of a sudden there's just like incredible pivot towards like massive immersion that I'm like, oh my God, like now they're going to have to catch up to that. And like, you know, and I just think, you know, there is a little disconnect there of what I'm trying to build and thinking about how it's going to get out there. But um, I'm not making total sense, but you know what I mean. Um, yeah, you are. You the, are. The, the thing with, um, for personally, I'm very, um, as an issue, um, I'm very, this, this Holocaust experience is amazing because there was a part of it where Pincus talked a lot about the, what was happening with the Syrian refugee crisis and what was happening in terms of you know, the Islamophobia that he saw rising and the parallels he felt, you know. And I was like, wow, this is really profound coming from this man of, of wisdom and, and what he's gone through. And so my next experience, I just thought, you know, how could we do an experience that could challenge uh, Islam, uh, you know, to counter Islamophobia? Because I think that's going to be something very important um, for us here. Um, for a lot of other countries. And so it's an experience that I'm working on to design that kind of like engages you with certain Sufi rituals um, that would be musical, that'd be participatory. Hopefully you want to do it again. Hopefully it's at IMAX. Hopefully we have Midwesterners going Allahu Akbar. It'd be amazing. Um, and you know, maybe there'll be some conversions. We'll all convert to Islam and everyone will be happy. Um, but no, I mean, I think something like that is what I'm, I'm thinking of. When we look at these incredible creators and the, a lot of the questions around this that have been happening, we've been discussing a medium and it's power, it's ability to both devastate and also emotionally engage people to do positive things upon the planet. The medium is the message. Yeah. McLuhan. Sure. But the truth is, uh, and 180 versus 360, probably. Like that has an impact on the type of message you're able to, to, to pass along. So I think if you're really going to ask these folks um, afterwards, I encourage everyone to, to do this. I have to stop now. But um, I, I, I do think that in a certain sense, we really start to ask ourselves, what is the message that way? Which is to say, we're going to create a tremendous number of constraints. And what would be the message the other way where we have a free and, and open space? So I hope that after today's incredible hard work that these folks did. They didn't, not, not only did they do this, but they also set up their works here and they're available for you to see and I don't want you to miss it. So we're gonna cut this off now, but um, I hope you can give them a real round of applause for the hard work they've done and the great panel that they have, so. And you too, Daniel. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if Kai wants to say anything before we go. I hope you all found some inspiration um, in the projects and in the uh, the use of the medium and our discussion about where where this medium is going. Um, and I want to thank Noya House for having us. Uh, it's been wonderful to be here. Um, and if you are interested in our series, um, we will have a video from this coming out. And um, you can follow us on Medium at Design Is. Um, that's where we'll be posting all the content. So. 
go upstairs, get a drink at the second floor, ask all these uh, artists more questions, keep the conversation going, and uh, thank you all for joining us. Thank you.